and welcome to Transit. I'm Dave McLaughlin. Today we're at the Ballarat Tramway Museum and we'll be talking to some of the volunteers who spend their time and effort conserving the heritage of the Ballarat Tramway. Stephen, can you tell us a bit about the history of the museum? Uh, the museum itself was uh, established after the tramways finished in Ballarat in 1971. Um, from there, a group of uh, enthusiasts, I suppose, uh, set up what was then the Ballarat Tramway Preservation Society. And from there, that society has progressed to a fully-fledged accredited museum, uh, looking after the interests of Ballarat trams and associated equipment, I suppose. How extensive is your collection of trams here? Um, we've got quite a variety of trams from the first tram that was built for Ballarat, horse tram number one. That was actually built in 1887. We found that horse tram in someone's backyard without any staircase or anything on it. It was uh, used as a shed uh, and for the price of a, a tin shed from Myers we got the horse tram and uh, reconstructed it after that. Uh, the collection then goes on. We've got uh, number 12, which is one of the uh, one of the other trams that was actually built for Ballarat, right through to number 40, which was the last electric tram that ran uh, again in 1971. And they've been all restored. Originally, we received five uh, for the museum, and one was retained by the Ballarat City Council. Uh, they were all in operational condition, uh, and basically, they went from the depot further around the lake. To, uh, to here and we drag them round and, and put them in the depot here. Horse tram number one we have basically reconstructed. There are quite a few original parts still on it uh, but there's been a brand new underframe put through it and everything. Uh, and some of the trams not like number 40 still haven't been painted since 1971 when we received them. So how much of the track were you left with when it was closed down? Okay, we, we still have 1.3 kilometres of the original track, which uh, is one of the only tramway museums in the world that still retain the actual original track. There is uh, Bendigo, of course, which runs through the city. They have changed the layout a little bit. Uh, the track from the street up to the depot here was all laid by the members uh, at the time. And how many members do you have at the museum here? Uh, we have over 200 uh, financial members, which is quite good, and it seems to be a very steady amount. Out of that, there's probably maybe 25 to 30 who contribute on a quite a regular basis, which is it's a fantastic number, really. Always do with more, of course. What sort of training uh, do your drivers and conductors have? Okay, the training, uh, the conductors is basically, I suppose, a one-day course. Um, plus some supervision afterwards. The drivers actually have to go through a 40-hour training process where they're under instruction with the driver trainer. It might seem like a very simple thing to drive a tram, but uh, and it is, unless, you, of course, you have an emergency situation, which is what a lot of the training is about. We are running in a situation where there's traffic on the street and a lot of children around at the playground areas, so we have to be uh, very well trained and we have to actually go through a, a process where we get accredited as a driver. And what sort of response do you get from the general public? What's the, the tours, how are they, how they patronised? The charters that we have uh, a lot are with school groups of course. Um, some are from the local area, most tend to come from outside of the Ballarat area. The locals in Ballarat, some people probably don't know we exist here, um, which is a little bit unfortunate, but I think the awareness of the museum itself is growing quite rapidly and over the next couple of years I can see that the awareness will be a lot greater. Gary, you're heavily involved in restoring the trams here at the um, Ballarat Tram Museum. Can you tell us a bit about, uh, about that? Uh, well, basically, um, I'm primarily involved in the restoration of, of trams back to what I guess you'd call original condition. Um, we, a, a lot of the, the older trams uh, went off to be used as sheds and outbuildings and chicken houses and things like that. And uh, over the years, we've collected a number of them back. Um, they come back in fairly poor condition and we have to spend quite a number of years um, putting them back into a form that actually looks like a tram. So the skills you use in doing this are very much the same skills involved in originally constructing them? 
Yeah, um, largely because we're doing a one-off project, uh, we're usually making you know, one or two of any piece. Um, we're doing a lot of things by hand. We don't have a mass production, whereas uh, you know, today in manufacturing anything, it's it's made by the thousands. We're we're making one of a particular item, or maybe two of, and we do it largely by hand using hand tools. Uh, most of the original methods, so to speak, um, we do use a few power tools where it uh, speeds up the process. Largely what we do is we take out an existing piece um, and we copy it. So accounting for the fact that there's 60 years worth of rot, um, we work out what the dimensions would have been originally. We try and work out what sort of timber it was and that's a, a, a real problem in our field is that the timbers that were available, uh, this tram is, is Parts of it are well over 100 years old. Um, timbers were, that were available at that point in time are simply not available today because the, the logging industry has changed. It's all, um, you know, pine and, and fast growth forests. The, the old growth uh, hardwoods just aren't available. So, where possible, we try and get the, the same sorts of timber, but but you know, never can do with metalwork and and. Areas like that, uh, mechanical fittings, etc., usually will take what's there and either try and repair it or make a replacement for it. Now this tram we're standing beside, can you tell us a bit of the history of this one? This is um, uh, well, uh, Electric Supply Company tram number 12. Um, this is quite unique in that it's the only remaining survivor of the original fleet of 18 electric trams that were built to start the electric tramway service in Ballarat. Now that was 1905. It's also rather unique in that it's one of the few survivors in the world of a, a very early technology of converting um, old cable and horse-drawn trams into electric trams. So it's a very rare tram? It is very rare in that sense, um, not only being the only one of its particular make, but a, a, one of a very few of that particular uh, methodology of building trams here. Yeah. And how long is it going to take you to get it uh, fully restored? Well, we've been working on it now for something like four years um, and we estimate probably another five years to go as you can see uh, looking at it here. We, we've pr progressed a long way from where we started. Um, it was originally or when we obtained it, it had been used as, a, as an extension to a house and uh, one end was the bathroom, the, um, the other end was a, a sort of spare bedroom and the, and the middle section was a wardrobe. Um, so it, it had uh, changed over its lifetime of, of what it actually used for. So when we got it, it had been substantially stripped down to its barest form and it had been sitting in that location for over 60 years. Um, We've gone all the way back to the bare frame. We've had everything out down to the last nut and bolt and uh, you know, build up from there, from the ground up virtually. Is this the most extensive sort of restoration work you've had to do? When this is finished, this will be the biggest project we've ever done. Our previous biggest was, was the Ballarat Horse Tram, which um, is of a similar age, but is a much smaller vehicle overall and uh, doesn't have the complication of, of electric wiring and, and mechanical motors and uh, mechanical braking, etc, etc. So it's, this is a much more extensive project. The body is more than twice the size of the previous one we did, so it's, um, it's a quite a bit more woodwork. Uh, as you can see, looking at them, they're almost 100% wood. There's very small amounts of metal in the framework and in the, uh, in the under, under frame, but uh, extensively, completely a wooden body. And the horse tram was in a similar condition when you restored it as well, wasn't it? Yes, largely. Um, I'm sure you've looked at that. And uh, from pretty much the window line down to the floor was uh, was wood rot. <laughs> I wouldn't call it timber. Um, it was wood rot. So it had been sitting on the ground for, for into its 60-odd 60, 60 years, used as a sleep-out. And uh, we basically learnt our skills doing that. Um, we had to, to start from the frame up and build everything you know, up to that level and beyond brand new. So 
it was a, it was a good learning ground, and we've moved on to bigger and better things. And to get to get these projects for restoration, do people actually give them to you, or do you have to actually go out and buy, search for them, and buy buy them? Or do people come along and say, "Hey, I've got this old tram in my backyard, and would you like it?" It's a bit both ways. Um, it, it tends to be as much a, of a chance occurrence as anything that we happen to, you know, somebody happens to be walking down a street and looks up a driveway and sees at the end of the driveway in a backyard a familiar shape that you would only find familiar if you were interested in that particular field. Um, so there's no records kept of where they went to or, or what was done with them and some of them have moved several times since they were disposed of so it's, it's very much chance and, and oftentimes the owners just want a shed to put in its place. They go, well, we're storing our garden tools in there. If you put a shed up, you can have it. So it's, it's very much a chance. This particular one, number 12, uh, lay right in the path of the, um, the Ballarat Bypass. So fortunately, the, uh, the Roads Construction Authority decided that one for us very nicely that, that there was a freeway going through there and the tram couldn't stay. <laughs> and that's all for our day here at the Ballarat Trams. We just have to get on board and go home. A double L double A R A T. That's Ballarat and it's home, sweet home to me. A city built on gold, it gave its wealth untold and made our land so great and grand, a land of liberty. B A double L double A R A T. Its fame is enrolled on the scroll of history So let your voices ring In praise of everything B-A-double-L-double-A-R-A-T